I yeah. like your backpack, by the way. Yeah. Someone jump street? Yeah. You see yeah. it? Not yet. I really, I really wanted to check it out, though. Yeah. It was at uh, South by Southwest. Oh, nice. I wasn't able to make it down there this year, but I love South by. I love Austin. Yeah. It's one of my favorite places in the world. Yeah. It's very cool. Um, How did you get involved with the project? Uh, I got involved with Cowgirls. They sent me the script, and I fell in love with it. I thought it was an amazing project. Just a lot of heart and... And I've been looking to do more kind of family-oriented uh, films. I, I kind of grew up uh, around rodeos whenever I was in Texas, and I went to a bunch, and I thought, always thought it was amazing. And it's always lovely to hear a story about, you know, uh, kind of a segment of society that you know about, but you're not really that familiar with. Right. And so for me, it was just uh, to kind of see what some of the struggles that it takes to, to follow your dreams and pursue a career in the rodeo uh, like how how hard that can be, mm-hmm. and I think that's something that you know any artist can relate to. It's just uh, the struggle to pursue your artistic desires and your artistic dreams, and and I think what what Bailey has man- managed is uh, manages to do in the film is just really kind of pull you along for the ride. You know, like it's she's such a she's such a heart and soul in it. It's like it's so sweet, and um, yeah, man. I think I I th- think I kind of came away with it, the sense of just it's uh, life is all about family and it's about the family that you're born into and it's about the family that you make along yeah. along the along the ride so yeah. to speak <laughs> there's a lot of chemistry between you and the character Kansas as is that something that you like recognized early on or is that something that kind of developed as the movie went along but that was something that um, definitely was kind of there from the onset yeah. um, and then we we definitely developed it. I remember when I first met uh, uh, Dora Madison, um, and she just you know she's just such a really fun, sweet, loving, giving person, and she's also uh, you know she loves music and and uh, I play music all the time, and so we kind of like hit it off just based on that, and mm-hmm. we uh, um, found some other people in Oklahoma who played bluegrass and played red dirt style music and. Uh, we start playing with them, and like we would go on set, and then we'd go and like go, go play music. And I think it was like the day before we started filming. Um, I was playing guitar outside, and she was just kind of dancing with the fireflies. And I swear to God, there were fireflies, and it was like this beautiful moment where she was just kind of dancing in the field, and I'm playing guitar. And, and I was like, man, this is a really sweet girl. Yeah, and uh, so it was really easy to kind of play that that character with someone as as wonderful as uh, as. As Dora Madison is. Is there anything that you brought to the character that that wasn't on the page? I would say you know the uh, Justin's character on page wasn't uh, yeah it wasn't necessarily like you know kind of that that, that I, I wanted him to have be a little bit away from just the cowboy cowboy you know yeah. like kind of roughneck I wanted that's why like he has the guitar in the scene and that's actually my guitar my old box guitar I love that thing. And I wanted him to kind of have that artistic bent, you know, because, you know, a lot of times you, you see cowboys portrayed in films and you just think, oh, there's just tobacco spitting, you know, horse humping kind of like, you know, jerks. And it, it, it's, not, it's not how they are. Whenever I grew up around uh, the rodeo and I grew up around other, you know, fellow Southerners, everybody's just so multifaceted. And that's, that's really what I wanted to portray with the character. So. I recognize that in, like, TV shows. I don't know if you're familiar with, like, Storage Wars. It's like, um, it's... Uh, I know the idea of it, yeah. Well, they started doing it in Texas, and they just make Texas look bad. I hate that. It's like, it's like one of those things, you know, everybody gets stereotyped. Every, everybody does. I mean, you know, there's there's some truth to it, but then, like, you know, out of all the truth, there's 90% false, you know? Right. And it's just kind of like, you know, I hate when, when people are misrepresented. I love Texas, too. Right? Yeah. So like, I always tell people, it's like... You really want to go get, get a sense of Texas? It'll take you like two years because there's so such a diverse state between everywhere. Where I grew up in Midland, mm-hmm. where my sisters live now in Austin, like San Marcos, and it's just uh, everything's so different. I, I love it. I love it. I hope to move back here one day soon. Yeah. Oh man, the, you know I, I've been blessed to be able to have a career you know, <laughs> where I can do like studio films and and uh, and do independent films. And uh, I think one of the advantages to independent film is just you have more of a control over the story, you know, it's not, you don't have like a hundred producers to go through, or, you know, like all these executives, right. and um, it's just, it's more about the people who want to make a story happen. Film, at its heart, 
it's a collaborative process. You know, you're going to have the makeup artist, you're going to have the set designers, you're going to have the director, the cinematographer, the lighting, uh, the gaffers, the, the sound department, like all these different artistic responsibilities that are working together all at once. It's like hundreds of artists come together to make this one story. And with an independent film, people aren't, aren't barely getting paid, you know, they're just doing it for the love of the story. Yeah. And because it's something that they feel strongly about, that they want to tell, you know. And I think uh, that's the that's the power of independent cinema. That's the that's the power of independent art. And I think it's uh, it's commendable that you know, like that whenever I go to these film festivals, and you just you kind of look around, you're just like, man, look at all these people just doing what they love. And it's it's really it's really uh, an empowering kind of feeling. Lastly, what would you say is your dream role? If there's like some book that you've read or old movie that you saw, if you could just pick one, like, I wanted to play that character. Yeah, well, man, I, well, growing up, one of my favorite books was uh, The Power of One by Bryce Courtney. It was turned into a feature, um, but the feature was not closely aligned to the book right. at all. The book is The Power of One. It's about this young man's uh, kind of growing up in uh, the apartheid in uh, South Africa. And he grows up to become a boxer, and he really just unites the, you know, the, the two completely segregated societies. He, he actually unites them, um, just due to his boxing and due to his lifestyle, and like, you know, who he embraces everyone. And along the way, he makes a lot of mistakes, but he becomes a really powerful character. The film version was like a love story, which yeah. didn't exist in the book. And, and I mean, I'd love to remake that film, based like, like in like the way that it was meant to be, like, it, to the book. And uh, that's a character that I, I'd, I'd love to play, you know. Um, as per, like, you know, that's, that's one of my dream roles. I mean, honestly, my, my dream role is to kind of, you know, have a story that I write and I direct and hopefully star in, you know. That's, I, I've been kind of working my way around the camera, getting into the production side of things for the last three, four years now. Uh, I have a, a production company, Patchmill Entertainment, mm -hmm. Uh, we actually have a bunch of uh, pitch meetings coming up, uh, and we've already produced a couple things, and I, I, I love it, man. It's like getting, putting the pieces together to like make a film is one of the coolest things in the world, I gotta say. I love it. I think there's, you know, it's a fine line to walk. You know, I think, uh, you know, certain stories need to follow the book very specifically, and certain stories need to, you know, kind of have their own creative bent to them. Because at the end of the day, when you read something, everybody's imagination is going to make a, the film in their own mind. Yeah, because they have like certain expectations about a character or the story. Or exactly. Um, but taking a, f uh, a book that had no love story, really, yeah. and, and making the film about a love story, that, that just like tripped me up. I was like, man, that's not how it was. Yeah. Like, I, I remember I read the book, and I was like, I love this book. And I found out there was a movie, and I was like, man, I'm, I'm so excited to see this. And I was watching the movie, and I was like, wait. What's happening? Yeah. <laughs> Who is this girl? Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then they left out the ending, the best part of the film. I mean, they this like really powerful ending, uh, where he kind of gets back at this uh, at, the, at this Nazi character, and that was like I've not seen that in the film. I was like, ah, oh, wow. Yeah. But you know, it's 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 it's, you know, it's it's all about you know every every filmmaker, every storyteller has the right to their own version of a story. Yeah. Very much. Hey, cheers. Thanks a lot.